a friend was replacing his dishwasher and he saved the motor for me. Now, unfortunately, I don't know anything about this motor, so in this video, I'll try to figure it out. Now, if you don't know much about motors, this will probably be very confusing to you. It's just to give you a sense of what I do to figure out a motor. First clue is the label here, and it says 3450 RPM. Now, that is an RPM that an induction motor will typically have, and just spinning it, there's no sound of any brushes. So it is definitely an induction motor. I don't see any evidence of a uh, centrifugal starter switch, which uh, induction motors often have. So possibly it's a capacitor or a run motor? I don't know. Now looking at the windings of this motor, we can see there's some relatively thick wires for the main winding and some thinner wires, which would probably be a starter winding which suggests that maybe it's a resistance start motor, but again, there's no centrifugal switch. Because resistance start for an induction motor is super inefficient, so that needs to be turned off as soon as the motor starts, but there's no centrifugal switch, so it's a mystery. Time to start doing some electrical probing. Now this cheap meter reads about 0.5 ohms on a dead short, so we know it's off by that much. So here we have 12.1 ohms reading between yellow and gray and all the windings seem to be connected together so this is quite a mystery so here's the resistances I've read between the colors of wires now I gotta figure out what that means okay first clue is the uh, 2.6 ohms from here to here plus the 6 ohms from here to here is very close to the 8.5 ohms within rounding that tells me there's probably nothing between those two because the uh, current going this way is what accounts for the eight and a half ohms. Next clue is the 11.6 ohms is pretty close to the sum of this plus this, which tells me there's no winding between gray and yellow, so that is also not a winding. I couldn't really make sense of this triangle here because none of the readings was roughly the sum of the other two, but then I remeasured everything and I got this one wrong, so that resistance here is basically the sum of these two. So we basically have this where dark blue is the common and we have three windings hanging off the common. Still a mystery. Fortunately this motor isn't welded together, so I'm going to take it apart to look inside. Okay, there's definitely no centrifugal switch and this is a squirrel cage rotor. Definitely an induction motor. And here we have all the windings very much uh, tied together, so it's very difficult to probe individual things. So let's put a compass in here. I know this is only a two-pole motor, so I can put the compass in the middle and there'll be a north-south if I put a battery on these windings. And I know dark blue is the common, so first let's apply some uh, current to yellow with a AA battery. And that has the north going this way, so this is yellow. Next, let's try the uh, gray wire. And that seems to be going the same but opposite direction. Light blue wire. And that points going down. So now redrawing it according to the phases, we know that yellow and gray are opposite to each other. So that would suggest that this is actually meant to be sort of a split phase. But if we look on here, we notice the thickest wire is the one that goes to the light blue. And that is also the lowest resistance. And that would suggest that that's the main winding and maybe these are starter windings. And it's weird to have uh, two starter windings in opposite directions, but maybe that's to make it easy to start this motor in opposite directions. That's my guess for now. Now a starter winding for a resistance start motor, which is what I'm guessing, will have fewer turns on it, so I'm going to run some current between the yellow and the light blue. And it looks like the compass is much more aligned with this direction, which is the uh, thicker winding on the light blue. So that tells me that the uh, thicker winding has got far more turns on it, or quite a bit more turns, 
than the thin winding. So that again verifies that the thick winding has to be the main one and the other winding having fewer turns and more resistance is probably a resistance start winding. So let's put this motor back together and try it out. So I've got the uh, power cord hooked up between the uh, light blue and dark blue and that's a 2.6 ohm winding. It's the lowest resistance winding but it should be the main winding and I'm not connecting any of the other windings which means there's no starting thing so this motor is just going to hum until I give it a twist. I think. Okay. Hmm, doesn't want to start. Okay, let's try this again. Dark blue on one side, light blue hooked up to this side, and I'm going to touch the gray wire. That should be one of the starter windings briefly to the light blue. That's the uh, lead that's not the common, and that should give it a kick to start it. <laughs> And there it goes. And it spun this way. Let's try the other potential starter winding. That would be the yellow wire. And again, I need to touch that to where the light blue is. Try not to zap myself. And this time it's going clockwise. So this motor has two starter windings to make it easy to start in either direction. And now with the motor running and a power meter hooked up, it draws about 167 watts running idle. Or let's switch it to amperes, 4.3 amperes. And the motor is rated for 5.3 amperes. So it's probably not a terribly efficient motor because it was drawing all that current without any load on it. So what's missing from this motor to make it usable for me is some kind of centrifugal starter switch that disengages the start winding once the motor is running because you can't leave that hooked up, it'll burn out the motor. In the dishwasher, the computer probably just turned on the start winding for the motor for the first half a second or so and then just assumed that it was running because it's only driving a small pump. Now if I had some kind of a switch that was say a rotary switch where it had an additional momentary thing to turn on the starter that would uh, allow me to just manually time it and my dad's old Felder table saw from 1986 actually had a switch that worked that way for the motors because they were also capacitor start motors without a centrifugal switch. I thought about just putting a capacitor in the start winding and worked out what capacitance was safe to leave on there but that turned out to be about half a microfarad and that was not enough to give this thing even a weak kick to get it started. But then I had the idea of using the uh, second starter winding, because I'm only ever using one starter winding to start in either one or the other direction, to use the other start winding to power a relay, because when the motor is running, there is a voltage induced in the starter winding just from the uh, spinning rotor. So I've got a 24 volt AC relay and the resistor in series so it doesn't trip below about 40 volts and that really disengages the other start winding so when I plug it in the relay trips once the motor is running but uh, the whole thing is a little bit less than elegant you can see that uh, click back and forth a few times let's do that again so that sparks more than once because as the AC relay gets close to tripping it uh, trips back and forth a bit so not an elegant solution, but it would make the motor usable if I really had to use it. So if you're not a motors expert, you probably found this video confusing, but I get a lot of emails from people, I've got this motor and it's got these wires coming out of it, how do I wire it up? Well, this gives you a sense of what I go through to figure one out. And if you want to learn more about motors, I've got a link to a playlist for my other videos about motors. Also a shout out to Jeremy Fielding because he makes pretty good videos about figuring out motors as well. And some of you will no doubt ask, what is this for? I think that is either a counterweight because the uh, motor on its suspension may have been hanging crooked, but more likely it is just to give it a little bit more angular momentum, probably because again the motor is on some rubber suspension thing that it might have gone shaking like this, and that changes the resonance quite a lot.